this video we will continue with the computational modeling of host pathogen interactions. So, we already have a Boolean model, building the model is the hard part and now we will go about simulating this model and deriving interesting insights you know even from by deleting nodes, perturbations as usual and so on to understand the important components of this host pathogen interaction machinery. How do you now simulate? So, as we studied in the previous class we can either go in for a synchronous update or an asynchronous update. When does one go in for a synchronous update versus asynchronous? So, asynchronous gives you a lot more stochasticity in process duration, right? You can have processes that are relatively more fast. Uh, synchronous uh, assumes that everything takes one, one time step to happen, right? Be it antigen presentation or um, you know the macrophage binding to some cell, whatever. All that takes exactly one time step, whereas the asynchronous allows for some more stochasticity. You can even have like longer term memory, you can even depend on something that was like 5 ste steps previously, 3 steps previously and all that although we did not uh, really do that here. So, we also tweak the Boolean model to account for delay in the onset of adaptive immunity. You have an adaptive immune system, but that never kicks off on day 0, right. It kicks off only after some uh, you know punishment has been uh, received from the bacteria, right. And what is the initial bacterial load, uh, then when does persistence set in, how efficient are we clearing the bacterium, this can depend on you know drugs and so on and is there a delay in phagocytosis, apoptosis and so on and so forth. So, we made essentially a semi quantitative model for this and if we if the growth rate of bacterium is taken as lambda for exponential growth, you can think of a simple equation like this. So, B t is B naught into e to the lambda t and we can update the uh, population in this fashion. So, we can say B t plus 1 is 1 plus alpha into B t and solving this you can see that alpha is nothing but e to the lambda minus 1, okay, this is very simple. So, we essentially used alpha as a, an input parameter to the model and so alpha is nothing but the incremental change in bacterial population at each time step. If bacteria, if conditions are good for bacterial clearance, right. So, what does bacteria growing and clearing mean as far as the Boolean model is concerned? True and false, right. So, if bacteria star evaluates as true, I will try to use this equation to grow the bacterium. If bacteria star evaluates as false, I will use this equation to basically clear out the bacterium. Right. So, this is like a clearance efficiency and uh, and so on which depends potentially on any drugs that are being taken and things like that. <coughs> so, we used an asynchronous update and we also had ranks for the Boolean functions to enforce update of certain nodes before the others. We saw that uh, how that works in Boolean net in the previous lab. So, these are all the parameters that we used. So, we looked at an initial bacterial load and th this is the possible range that we determined through a study of literature and so on. So, so B dot then what is the maximum bacteria for infection to like really be you know irreversible in some sense, then what are the threshold for clearance and um, how long should it persist, how long uh, should it stay in the body in within a zone before it enters uh, persistence and um, uh, what is the, so this is the. Um, this is the number of bacteria that should be there and this is the time. So, 14 is 14 days or 2 weeks, this is uh, onset of adaptive immunity which is again 2 weeks, then you know uh, some default values for bacterial growth and clearance and delay in phagocytosis, apoptosis and so on and so forth and we simulated for 15 weeks. It is a yeah, it is a it is a sort of macro model, it is not a very cellular model. In, it, in some sense it is a cellular model, it takes uh, into account the cellular uh, components and so on, but then overall looks at the concentration of bacteria in the whole human sort of thing, right. So, we performed the simulations using uh, Boolean net and we had 3 possible disease outcomes. So, it could be either active disease, persistence or bacterial clearance and we performed 1200 runs of the simulation and the dominant outcome we found was persistence, which is actually what happens in reality, right. TB most people are just carriers of TB without actually even manifesting, 
what we found that uh, for example we did find that uh, you know um, we can uh, sort of mimic vaccination by putting delta ai is zero so that is the adaptive immunity delay so what does it mean when delta ai is zero it means you've already been exposed right which is what, which is what happens during vaccination and we find that in almost all cases they don't go towards active disease which is reasonable uh, observation but of course sometimes you do find that vaccinated individuals in reality can uh, uh, contract disease so we find that you know low initial bacterial uh, load we have more persistence and high initial infection you have more active disease and uh, again you know if you have low clearance uh, or you know low growth persistence is predominant and high growth active disease and high uh, clearance efficiency you have bacterial clearance and so on and although these are like sort of fictitious parameters in the model you can think of alpha and eta to be influenced by any drugs that are being taken and so on so if you're taking rifampicin that would have a particular influence on alpha and eta if you're taking isoniazid it may have a different influence on alpha and eta and so on so and this is like a state map for the simulations so this lists you know several of the semitified states that we have right so uh, so black uh, so blue is on and white is off and so on and if you see uh, uh, i've not shown bacteria here because it makes more sense to look at bacteria as the load right because we have a discrete update for bacterial population after each time step so this is how the bacterial population varies so after this point of time it basically goes into persistence and we also as in any systems biology experiment one wants to do perturbations right what happens when you when there is some defect in the system if there is a bacterial protein that's not working perhaps because of a drug or there is an immune defect or so on for whatever reason so what are the or even without going into a, the physical physiological significance of these experiments it helps us understand what are the key players in these systems right and what are the key drivers of these interactions so this is a map of knockouts and um, uh, which show which how many what fraction of simulations re resulted in active disease right so if you see if i knocked out phagocytosis uh, some formation or phagocytosis it always resulted in disease you see a completely dark band there and if inflammatory molecules are not present in the human body it means your defense is too weak so in a lot of cases it was leading to active disease so uh, this is along with so this is a double knockout this matrix so it shows you what happens when you know i remove inflammatory molecules and catelicidin so two major inflammatory molecules are out disease always sets in right and so on so this again as i was mentioning reflect the critical components of the system so any time you knocked out phagolysis uh, phagolysis some formation and phagocytosis together it always led to active disease and we also found that most knockouts lead to a higher incidence of persistence that's not visible from this figure but it is visible from this figure the figure on the right shows you can see it's a very dark plot right compared to the others right so the darker the square is more fraction of simulations ended in that outcome which in this case is persistence so except you see a full white band for phagolysosome because all of this in is in the previous slide where it all went to active disease so if you see this you find that whenever cat g is not there whenever cat g is knocked out almost goes into persistence right and similarly whenever apoptosis is knocked out persistence is more common and so on and so forth so you can study what are also when il10 is um, uh, knocked out along with uh, so, you know there are some pro and pro inflammatory and anti inflammatory cytokines right so there is a delicate balance between these two in the body so you see that some, sometimes it can result in clearance a lot of times when this is a uh, uh, knocked out and in many cases uh, you know when apoptosis is knocked out there is no clearance at all okay. or when interferon gamma is not there there is practically no clearance at all right so these are very uh, interesting insights that one can obtain by studying knockouts or perturbations on these kinds of models so to summarize it this just gives you a birds eye view of the host pathogen interplay it's a far more complex uh, network that underlies this this is just uh, but a small 
you know very high resolution uh, you know or a high level view of what happens but the model is amenable to various analysis such as uh, node deletions and so on it gives you good insights into uh, critical uh, immune processes and is a very strong framework for integrating quantitative data right? if you know what is going to be the effect of a particular drug on a particular uh, component you can easily include that and so on but obviously the model is limiting in the sense you currently have only on and off states for practically everything we did you know put something for the bacterial population and so on but otherwise it's just either on or off but this you know you can imagine is a sort of a strong way to look at uh, a nice way to study host pathogen interactions you can you can study metabolism as well but the good thing is that you can study metabolism and integrate it into this model right because this model presents you a lot of opportunities to integrate uh, as i was pre mentioning even in a previous class the boolean framework or the discrete framework gives you an opportunity to integrate from other kinds of modeling techniques you can like solve an ode to decide the outcome of a particular uh, state right or you can solve uh, you know an fba model to predict the outcome of some other state and so on so there are 75 nodes including bacteria 18 virulence factors these are actually from the bacteria right so these are bacterial cell and bacterial molecules inside the bacterial cell 56 host components including 11 cellular processes 19 cells and cell states and 26 molecules themselves in this video we looked at simulations of the boolean network model that we built for studying uh, mtb human interactions it's, it was not a pure boolean model but we also had some nice hacks to include how the uh, the bacterial load changes and you know the efficacy of a drug and uh, so on and in the next video we will switch gears and look at some we'll start looking at some advanced topics we'll first look at robustness in biological systems i'll give you a brief overview of robustness in biological systems